am Dr. Rita T. R. Pai. I am a specialist uh, general and breast surgeon in Medcare Hospital, Sharjah. I have uh, completed my MBBS from Bangalore Medical College and MS General Surgery from Mysore Medical College. I am also trained from a uh, member of Royal College of Surgeons, Edinburgh. So I am here today, this afternoon, uh, with all of you to give you brief awareness about uh, breast cancer uh, and breast cancer screening, how it has to be done and uh, to remove whatever the doubts you have. You're all welcome to post in your uh, questions and uh, I'll be very happy to answer and clarify all your doubts. So why we chose, as uh, all of you are aware, I think uh, all of us know that October is considered as a pink month, that is the month of uh, breast cancer awareness. And during breast cancer awareness month, uh, all the hospitals and in the whole world, all the surgeons, breast surgeons, including the, all the doctors are busy, uh, you know, giving the awareness of this disease to the, uh, all of you. Why we consider this disease as serious or why you need awareness about this disease is because this is a curable disease. If detected early, you are 100% the disease is uh, curable. So the early detection is the most, most, most important uh, point uh, to give you a cure so that you can all visit the doctors, your doctors early and get yourself cured and not suffer from or not suffer death because of breast cancer. And uh, around the 1 million uh, breast cancer ca cases are diagnosed every year and the death uh, rate is around 18% in the, you know, of the, all the deaths happening out of cancers, only next to lung cancers in ladies. So because the incidence is increasing nowadays because of changes in the lifestyle and uh, uh, all these factors, there are so many risk factors which are contributing to the increase in the incidence of the breast cancers throughout the world, especially in the um, developing countries. Earlier it was a disease of the western world where only the high influential or high economic uh, uh, level society used to suffer from this disease but now it's become like it, the incidence is increasing in all classes including the developing world. So the breast cancer uh, as all of you know it's a malignant tumor. It's a tumor in the breast which grows so rapidly and uh, it can lead to the uh, you know, the serious consequences if not detected early. So the breast cancer can also metastasize, means it can spread to other parts of the body, resulting in grave complications. It can spread to your lungs, liver, and uh, the brain and the spinal cord, leading to severe complications. So to prevent all this, my dear friends, we have to have an awareness. We have to know that it has to be detected early and uh, treated early. So let me discuss a few risk factors which are uh, there for the you know for breast cancer. Aging, the aging is the most important uh, risk factor and female sex. So the amount of uh, cancer we see in male breast is less than 1%. Whereas in females, the incidence is very high and as you age, the risk increases. For example, if the risk of uh, getting breast cancer is 1 in 2000 when you are 20 to 30 years. It goes to 1 in 250 when you are 30 to 35 years and it goes to above 40 to 40 to 50 years is it, it is 1 in uh, 170 and then it decreases after 60 to 70 years the risk is 1 in 70 people can develop breast cancer. So aging itself is a big risk factor for the breast cancer. Then the other risk factors I would like to mention is the menstrual cycle, the onset and the uh, end, like the menarche, we call it as menarche, that is when you start with your cycles and menopause is when the cycles finish. So if the, you get a menarche at an early age, for example, if the menarche is, uh, comes before the age of 12 years, if it is 7 to 12 years, we give a higher score, that is the risk increases for developing breast cancer. Similarly, if the menopause happens after 50 years, then again the risk goes little higher compared to the menopause happening before 50 years. So the longest duration of your cycle increases the risk for developing breast cancer. And then the third point is 
the nulliparity. If uh, the uh, if you are having your first nulliparity is not having uh, children or having a child after the age of 30 years increases the risk of uh, breast cancer again. But why is this so? See, the estrogens are the ones which are making the breast cells to get into develop into cancer cells. So when you are pregnant or when you are uh, feeding breastfeeding your babies, the estrogen is inhibited. So what happens if you are uh, un if you are unmarried or if you are having the no, if they are not having the children or if you have your child at a very late uh, uh, age that more than thirty years then all this they contribute to the increased risk of and, and stress upon is breastfeeding 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 definitely is a uh, protection for uh, uh, breast cancer so it removes the risk of breast cancer by more than twenty to thirty percent in your lifetime. So each child, even if you have one child, two children or three children, each child you need to feed for at least a period of 12 to 18 months, not less than that. When you breastfeed your children for at least 12 to 18 months, this removes the lifetime risk of developing breast cancer by 20 to 30 percent. Then Anaka, let us discuss about another risk factor, risk factor that is obesity, especially menopausal obesity because the estrogen, the fatty tissue in the body is converted into estrogen, so the level of estrogen increases in obese people. So when the level of estrogen increases, again that increases the risk for uh, developing the breast cancer. Then another lifestyle, lifestyle is also very important uh, uh, as it is, you know, important for preventing so many other diseases. Same way, to prevent the breast cancer, you need to have a very good lifestyle having especially the fatty food, the animal fat is not good for uh, breast health. So when the animal fat intake is increased, including the dairy products, if it is on an increased level, it can increase, and red meat, red meat consumption, or any fat from the animal source can increase the risk of uh, developing a breast cancer. And also there is a study to show that four hours of exercise in a week can reduce the breast cancer risk by 20 to 30 percent. So just four hours of exercise per week can bring down your risk of developing a breast cancer in future. And alcohol intake definitely is a very high risk factor, especially more than four to five drinks a day is bad for your breast health. And smoking definitely no no for breast health. Smoking not only increases the risk of breast cancer, it even worsens the possibility of uh, uh, the benign breast diseases which uh, you know makes you get breast pain and the heaviness in the breast and also it can give you a infective condition called as periductal mastitis which affects your nipple area and can lead to the complications. So all these things you should keep in mind when we are taking preventive measures to prevent the um, breast cancer. And also one more important uh, guidance I want to give you is Self about self breast examination. Self breast examination is a very very important part of uh, breast uh, you know awareness, breast cancer awareness, uh, where you. This is again the intention of uh, self breast examination is to bring your notice to the early lumps. Whenever you detect, as I discussed in the beginning of my uh, uh, presentation, the earlier you detect the cancer, the higher the uh, chances of uh, getting a complete cure of the disease process. So uh, when you do a self breast examination, it has to be done once a month between 7th to 10th day of your uh, menstrual cycle because if you are doing just before your cycles, you will be feeling a nodular breast which may confuse uh, you and you may think that you are having multiple lumps in your breast. So better to plan your uh, the breast self breast examination either 8th, 9th or 10th day of your cycle, not more than 10 days. So the first day of bleeding is first day, 7 days from that. So you calculate and then you count either you do on 8th, 9th or 10th day. And for menopausal ladies, you should have a fixed date of examination like first of month, second of month and do it once a month. And uh, you have to do it both in uh, the sitting posture and the lying down posture where you can examine with your palm as well as, as the fingertip, the entire quadrants of the breast, the upper quadrant, lower quadrant, inner quadrant, outer quadrant and also the armpits. And this self-breast -exa examination uh, has, has shown that 40% of the uh, breast 
the cancers we detect in the whole world are detected by self breast examination so the importance of self breast examination should not be you know uh, should not be should always be taken care of when you are doing a self breast examination so now uh, i invite uh, my friend aida to join me and uh, to uh, you know to join me and inform me about your questions and we'll be having a discussion thank you very much doctor thank you welcome as all to the live session today i would like to thank all our viewers today uh, that they are with us and are active with their questions and if you want to ask uh, questions please i'm here to reply to you each of one so doctor um yeah, it's kind of sad and happy uh, moment to have a breast cancer, cancer awareness month uh, every year because the sad part that people, they, like the women, uh, most of women, they're suffering from this. Like there is a woman who's suffering from this disease. And the good thing about this uh, month is that we have certain um, uh, events or certain things we can speak about to aware people. So you earlier you were talking about the signs of cancer, or risk and signs, what, what can happen. And thank you very much for mentioning as well about the uh, self uh, check. It's very important because I think not everyone is aware about it, but you can do it yourself. So I want to ask uh, a bit more. I'm sure that uh, we covered almost like a certain place of the self checkup, but uh, we were talking about how. I want to understand as well, and most most probably the viewers, how it feels if okay we're uh, trying to do self check. What we will feel at that moment, like what we should understand, what should we should find that okay we have to see that there is something. Yes, yeah, that's a good question. See, uh, so breasts are softer to touch, okay. so they should be soft, especially when you examine between seven to tenth day of your cycle. Okay. So the nodularity starts. When, uh, you know, as the hormones start acting on your breast, okay. maybe after two weeks you examine your breast, you feel there are lumps everywhere. Yes. So the, usually the breasts are soft to touch and sometimes if you are uh, having some hormonal influence, it may, you know, feel rubbery. But definitely a lump you will definitely feel. So uh, you should stress upon not missing any quadrants of the breast. Yes. So as I told you, if you take a breast as a whole, and this center part is the nipple areola the area has to be divided into four quadrants okay. inner upper inner lower outer upper outer lower then the nipple areola area and the armpits okay. so all the quadrants should be examined both in the standing and sitting posture okay. and also one more thing i forgot to mention that time sure. you have to uh, look at the mirrors you have to look at the mirrors to uh, compare the uh, you know color of the nipples, how the skin is ex excoriated or any lesion on the skin of the nipple, nipple is retracted or we call it as an inverted nipple. Inverted nipple is one of the signs of the breast cancer. Okay. It's a recent retraction. We call it as a recent uh, nipple retraction, not uh, you know the old. See, for some people have an inverted nipple from the puberty, from yes. the development of breast. So that is normal. But some people, if they notice a recent retraction or a recent okay. inversion of nipple. That has to be, uh, you know, they have to consult the doctor immediately. And also the compare right with the left, left with the right, and look for any bumps which is visible without palpation. If you're feeling there is some, you know, like uh, elevation different, of the breast. Um, yes. Yeah, different. They even people ask me if the right breast is bigger, left breast is bigger, is it okay? I said it's normal. If your breast have developed like that over the years, that's normal. Anything which is new has to be, you know, taken care of. Yes. So, um, what I understand that um, when we're palpating the... Yes, when you're palpating, there are some lumps, like we call benign lumps, they usually uh, felt better with the uh, fingertips, like, okay. you know, because they have a smooth surface. Okay. Whereas the cancer lumps are more irregular and oh. they're like uh, diffuse. So, you have to palpate with the flat of your hand. So, you so the flat it. of your hand will recognizes or identifies uh, such a lumps, which are diffuse and irregular. Whereas the tip will identify the benign lumps which are more rounded and encapsulated. I mean they are like more round like balls. Mm -hmm. Whereas they are diffuse and irregular, you need to palpate with the flat of the hand. So we tell every time to do with both the fingertips as well as with the flat of the hand mm -hmm. in all the quadrants. Okay, that's, that's good to know. I mean, uh, we talked earlier about the food affecting our 
diet. Let's yes. see diet, uh, the lifestyle we're using, uh, we're living now at the moment. Uh, is the stress can cause that as well? Yeah, this definitely. The stress will alter your hormonal levels, mm -hmm. and also the stress stress causes you know uh, the body to un the stress can lead to so many changes in the uh, body, mm -hmm. including you know where the antioxidant level comes down with the stress, and there are toxins which are produced because of stress. All this will increase your risk for cancer, and also the benign breast diseases. As uh, I was discussing, yes. see, forty percent of the ladies they suffer from a condition called as fibroadenosis. Okay. Which which is a benign breast disease and benign mumps. So you don't have to be panicky when you find something in your benign breast this disease. Is especially, about to ask. yes, especially if you're younger, less than 50 years or less than 40 years, you don't have to get anxious or panic about any lumps or any pain you feel in exactly. the breast. Just it, this benign breast diseases can increase with the level of stress. So when you're stressed, the incidence of this fibroadenosis or hormonal uh, you know, influence happening in the breast will increase. Mm -hmm. So, as you told, uh, a healthy lifestyle with uh, very stress important. modification. Yes, that's um, right. I think as well the sport. It's uh, exercise. Yeah, exercise. I, as I insisted, that four yeah. hours of exercise. They have done a research study. Four hours of exercise is definitely beneficial to bring down the risk by twenty to thirty percent. So, the, uh, just a question uh, from our one of our uh, viewers today, like one of our followers, that. Um, in case if, okay, the person, she found uh, something there, um, how fast she has to go to doctor first? The second, uh, what kind of um, uh, services we're using to figure out or to check up or to consult okay. the patient? Okay. So, uh, see, the whenever you feel lump or pain in the breast or any kind of symptom in the breast, even nipple discharge, even during self-breast examination, I forgot to mention about the nipple yes. discharge. In self-breast examination, when you are uh, doing, at the end of your examination, try to do a round-the-clock examination on the nipple area and press in a clockwise direction and see if you are able to, uh, you know, express any discharge coming out, like a bloody discharge or a watery discharge. So whenever you get any nipple discharge or you feel any lump or uh, pain in the breast, better to see the doctor as early as possible. Okay. Since we are all available to you and uh, it's not uh, very difficult to uh, take the uh, you know, consultation of it at the earliest, as early as possible. Once you visit us, what we'll be doing, we'll be doing a uh, called a test called triple test. What is triple test? Triple test is nothing but clinical examination which I examine you with the hands and then the radiological examination which we do with ultrasound breast and then mammogram and MRI as I'll tell you in which case we do which test and then the finally it is the biopsy or the histopathological examination. So the triple test is a very very important I mean that is the foundation for diagnosing any breast lump. So triple test is the foundation. So first I examine you. I examine and I'll tell you whether the lump I'm, you know, having any suspicion whether it is cancer or non-cancerous. That's the first thing I'll do after examining you clinically, doing an examination of all the quadrants and the armpits and your general examination. Then I'll be deciding which test you should go for. So the decision of the test depends on what findings I get on examination and also the age of the patient. For example, if the patient is less than 40 years, my first examination, the radiological test I would like to do is ultrasound examination of the okay. breast, not the mammogram. Okay. Because mammogram is not very accurate in dense breast because the, the, the dense breast will obscure the lesions which can be picked up by the uh, mammogram. So the dense breast, less than 40 years, it's ultrasound is the first test. If after 40 years, and also, if I'm feeling a suspicion of the malignant lump, then mammogram will be the first. If I have any suspicion of a malignant lump in younger individuals, then also I'll do the ultrasound, then go for an MRI breast rather than a, a mammogram. And uh, also, the third test will be the uh, biopsy test is required only when there is an irregular lump. We pick which, again, the third test, the biopsy test, is decided by the ultrasound findings and the mammographic findings because ultrasound is accurate more than 90% in telling us whether it is any benign or a suspicious lump even if there is a 1% suspicion of like the lump doesn't good doesn't look good in mammogram or in uh, ultrasound we tell 
go ahead with the biopsy. Again, there are the two biopsies we do, a needle aspiration biopsy where under ultrasound guidance, okay. we pass a needle into the lung and take the sample and examine it under the microscope. Is it the, a cancer? Or is a cancer or a non-cancer lung. And also we do a true cut biopsy, which is a little more painful compared to the needle, but it is more accurate than just the needle test. So this is called true cut biopsy. And then uh, other, the final one is a wide excision biopsy where we remove the whole lung and send it for Good to know, Doctor. Uh, I just want to mention one um, in between of conversation that uh, as uh, we're Medcare Hospital Sharjah, we're located in Sharjah, and as far as I know that not all ladies or women, they are willing to go to a doctor, male doctor, to check up, or we're all women, we understand the situation. So Dr. Uh, Gita, she is the female uh, surgeon, she is the female doctor who can check up you, and you can book your appointment always uh, with us, with Dr. Gita. So, uh, for the, uh, we talked about a bit about the uh, stage of cancer. Example, there is a first, second, third stage uh, where we can cure, which stage is curable and which stage we need to be careful. And if, if we have a, like many, many uh, ladies, they're giving the birth and they're finding out that they have cancer, can they feed the baby or no? Like, the certain aspect of this part. Yes, yes, sure. That's a good question again. And uh, so, let's see, the, we stage the cancer according sure. to the size of the lump and the presence of lymph nodes in the armpits and also the spread of cancer to other parts of the body. Yes. So stage one and stage two. Uh, stage one cancer is usually the lump is less than two centimeters without going to the armpit lymph nodes or without any distance spread. Mm -hmm. Where we say it is five year survival rate is almost 100%. We can say if treated with all multi modality treatment, I think uh, later we'll discuss what are the treatment options. Again, I will be highlighting on that. And stage two cancer again is curable. Uh, stage two is where you have a number of lymph nodes. We again we divide it into two A, two B based on yes. the less than three lymph nodes, more than four lymph nodes palpable. Again, stage three and uh, stage two, two to five centimeter, and then stage uh, three is of more than five centimeter and with the lymph nodes. And stage four is a uh, you know where we can say the prognosis that the outcome of the treatment yes. will not be good because they would have spread to other parts of the body like lungs and liver we call it as metastatic cancer so we call it as a locally advanced breast cancer early breast cancer and a metastatic breast cancer and definitely the earlier we detect as a being uh, you know putting my importance on that it has to be detected early then only it is curable and uh, that was a good question you asked me about uh, pregnancy and childbirth. See, the, there is uh, most cancers, with the breast cancer which happen during pregnancy and in the perpurium, that is during uh, uh, post-childbirth, are usually aggressive. They need to be treated very aggressive because they are very aggressive cancers, not like ugly breast cancers. And uh, there's also a special variety called inflammatory breast cancer. If this happens in a pregnant or a lactating lady, it can be mistaken with a breast abscess. What is breast abscess? It is collection of the pus in the breast. So we shouldn't, I mean, the patient, even doctor or a patient can get confused that it is a uh, inflammatory, I mean, it's a breast abscess. So during pregnancy, the only treatment we give is a surgery because the radiation is uh, contraindicated. And as soon as she uh, brings out the baby, it has to be followed with the rest of the treatment. And uh, during lactation, so, the, of course, the breastfeeding, if they are diagnosed with the breast cancer, yes. the treatment of the breast cancer will definitely you know, stop them from feeding the baby. Medication yeah, depending medications on depending on what treatment we decide to give her, that will decide whether she can breastfeed the baby. And also, why they present late in um, pregnancy and lactation period is because the breasts are uh, engorged with yeah. milk. There is milk in the breast yeah. and the, the lungs can be easily missed. Yeah. Easily missed and uh, so... We have to be more exactly. careful. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, doctor. Uh, but the incidence is quite less. The breast cancer is happening during pregnancy and lactation is very less. So, the, the, my friends, no need to get panicky that you will not be able to locate a lump during the pregnancy and lactation. But it is uh, very rare. Rarely we come across the uh, breast cancer lumps in uh, pregnant and uh, lactating uh, ladies. As I told you, the hormone estrogen is inhibited during pregnancy it's and very lactation. Important to know. So, we don't uh, come across. Uh, you know, cancers happening very commonly in that.
pregnant and lactation rate is. And while I was discussing the risk factors, I, I you know, yes. I mentioned, I didn't mention about the familial uh, hereditary breast cancers exactly. of the, which are related to the genes. Yes. I think yes. all of us are quite aware of uh, BRCA1 and BRCA2 because it, exactly. even, uh, it is again one of the points focused on during the uh, awareness month. BRCA1, BRCA2 are the gene mutations which happen and that makes you more uh, prone to develop uh, breast cancer. It increases your risk by again, if I want to put it, the BRCA1, the risk goes by 40%, BRCA2 mutation, the risk goes to 65%, the lifetime risk. So this uh, gene mutation can be tested, uh, you know, by uh, doing a genomic assay. And they have to be more careful and they have to, you know, subject themselves for more screening more often. For example, I advise, uh, you know, if you have a BRCA1 mutation, every six months you have to do an ultrasound and uh, whatever the tests I discussed. But if uh, I don't have a sample that uh, BRCA1 mutation, yes. how often I have to do Yes, the, that's a uh, good question. See, if you are uh, like a uh, normal uh, uh, lady without any family history of breast cancer or without the, any, you know, with the, and the, in BRCA1, BRCA2 mutation, the, the relative, the either a first degree or a second degree uh, relative would have developed the breast cancer at an earlier age. Mm -hmm. less, or maybe less than 40 or less than 50 years. That's when we suspect the BRCA1, BRCA2 mutation. If you are uh, maybe, uh, if you are in, uh, just you want to go for a, a breast screening program, I advise self-test examination to start as young as uh, 20 years and ultrasound examinations maybe once in 3 years from 25 to 30 years. After 30 to uh, 40 years annual ultrasound examination and after 40 years no family history of breast cancer, maybe annual ultrasound examination and self-breast examination every month, clinical breast examination by a doctor every six months at least, and mammogram every three years. That's very should, be the, uh, should be the order of the test if you don't have any family history or uh, uh, no risk factors like BRCA1, BRCA2. This is more than enough for the general population screening. Very important. Yeah. Doctor, I hope that we at the moment uh, covered all the aspects of breast cancer. So I want to thank everyone and thank you for being here today with us. I want to thank people who is with us today and uh, who wants to uh, visit us or book appointment. Please don't be shy, don't be scared, don't be afraid from anything. Just book an appointment. Dr. Gita is here, the Medcare Hospital uh, with you. Please will treat you well. We will give you all the needed information to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Package, so, uh, yeah, as well, we're, we're running a packages which might be really affordable for you and we will be happy to give all the source of services you will need uh, to take care of you. So this is very important for us. Your health is important for us. So thank you so much, Dr. Gita. Thank you, everyone, and wish you everyone to be healthy. Um, yes, Dr. So please, if you want to say something, yeah, uh, thank you, my listeners. Hope uh, whatever the discussion we had in the past 30 minutes will help you a lot. And uh, if you have any queries, uh, do visit us in the Medicare website or you can even come and visit us. We have good uh, breast screening packages uh, now running till the whole month of October. And thanks uh, once again for uh, listening.